Okay, good evening folks and welcome to another In the Gutter Chat House. Tonight I'm with uh, P. Schlogos um, and we're going to talk things all punk rock, um, radio station stuff, bands, music, you name it. I think we're going to cover it. I hope anyway. <laughs> um, you right, Peach? How you doing, mate? Um, absolutely fantastic and thank you for inviting me on here. It's a massive pleasure. So, And it's yeah. good to meet you here for the first time as well which is nice yeah, yeah that's good um to be yeah and same to you as well it's uh, great to meet you uh, first time tonight um you've been in quite a few bands over the years um your main band at the moment the logos um you also do cherry and peach um and occasionally you do the blisters as well i believe right yeah yeah um Give us a bit of background on your band history then. How old were you when you got into it? And um, what sort of music got you into it? Okay, I mean, we're going all the way back. Um, when I was a teenager, I first got my first musical instrument when I was 15. I, I played drums for years. I played drums for nearly oh, 10 years. Yeah. Uh, up until my mid-20s, playing in cover bands and then onto various um, original bands like in my early 20s. So I didn't really start taking part or writing until kind of early mid-20s. So yeah. I was quite late this side of things you know i've almost got like a, a separate sort of like we're well, not career but you know a separate history as a drummer and yeah. um, you know gigs in the old newcastle riverside as a drummer and my old band called parker and right. um, and we did okay but it just wasn't enough and i just i kind of started from scratch i just jacked the drums and just went i need something else i need to be creative i don't know where it came from to be fair because mm -hmm. i always grew up with music at home like my parents were massive music fans my dad was into the heavier stuff, the ACDC, Zeppelin, Sabbath. My yeah, mom yeah. was into Pinks, Monkeys. Yeah, so yeah. I like the heavy, I like the pop music as well. Yeah, so, yeah. That, yeah. you know, so I always like melody, but I like sort of heavy edge stuff as well. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so when I started, I started doing, I bought some recording equipment in about 2000 or something and just started knocking some demos, the first songs that I ever did in very early sort of internet days. And I used to burn them onto CDs and I sent them away to a few, um, independent punk labels and I've got some really good feedback. Yeah, yeah. A project Junkster, even though J U N K S T E R I call it Junkster just as a to give yeah. it a name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few good uh, reviews on Demo Land and Frozen Oak Records and I was thinking, wow, maybe I can, you know, maybe do a band with this. Um mm -hmm. so I I wasn't really looking for a band, but a few of mates of a mate's band were playing locally and they were doing Wild Hearts covers and Green oh, Day. Okay. And yeah. I just thought, wow, this is right up my street. And I went to see them in my local town in Ashton, in Northumberland, one night. And they were doing the last gig because their singer was leaving to go to college right. that, after that weekend. So they says, we need a singer. We've heard you're playing guitar and singing. Do you fancy it? And I says, well, I'd rather not do covers. If I can, if you can play my songs, let's do it. Yeah, so yeah. that was the end of, of, of Junkstar in early, about 2000, late 2002, early 2003. So I literally didn't do my first gig singing and playing until I was in my late twenties. You know what I mean? So I was very late. You know, so I haven't done this all my life. So even now, I still feel I'm I'm kind of blagging it, and I'm like new to this. You know what I, mean? I still feel like I'm a novice. You know. But, <laughs> so so that was my yeah. Right, going, going, going back slightly there, what what were the bands that inspired you to play then? Really, I know you mentioned a few bands that your parents listened to. Um, were they necessarily the bands that inspired you or with some other bands um well maybe yeah that, that's you a good question be yeah because when i was playing drums i was inspired by the sort of led zeppelin the who yeah and i was in a, i was in a sleazy rock and metal i love i loved um motley crew and Def Leppard and metallica when i was growing up as well yeah, but, yeah. um but even when i first got into i mean the, the wild hearts kind of changed my perspective on bands because as soon as I, I saw them heard them they were instantly my favorite band of all time yeah, it yeah. was sensibilities and the riffs. It was just like, wow, blew my head off. But I was still a drummer then, so it wasn't the Wild Hearts that turned me on to playing guitar. It yeah. was really, I'll be honest, it was it was Green Day when I very first saw Green Day, right. the Doogie stuff, yeah. and I just it just looked Billy mm -hmm. Joe kind of made it look easy. I know it's you know because the early Green Day stuff is very just three chord, energetic, you know, it's punk, and I just thought. Maybe I can do that. You know I, mean? so I was trying to get a shortcut to just playing guitar. I never had a guitar lesson, never had a drum lesson. I just wanted to 
to, you know, I kind of want to do things instantly. I haven't got time. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, spend hours and hours and hours. But I thought, well, yeah. So I bought the Dookie guitar, chord book, very lazily. Got an acoustic guitar and I just started hammering out three chord punks. So that was my introduction. Yeah, yeah. So you that, as you know yourself, as you progress as a musician. But yeah, I would say, as a guitarist and singer, um, if you want to call it that, I was, I was probably influenced more so by Green Day right. than, than anyone, really. You yeah, know? yeah. In, in yeah. them early days, anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, after you'd done the Junkster, you obviously went on to another band. What was your next band after that that you, you went well, on the to? Next um, well, the, the reason why I finished with Junkstar was because we actually got an independent record uh, deal and we're just about to release an album called Greetings from the Underground, which is, we've got a band camp page, so it's on there, so you can still buy it and listen to it. Right. We're very proud, but we didn't get released because the label kind of pulled off the scene, stopped with gigging, stopped with playing, and the band kind of just dissolved. Right. And I stayed on the label as a solo artist, just trying to find a way, and it just didn't work out. So I never played live for about two years. Oh, blimey. But came out of the deal, yeah, unbelievably. Yeah. Took this label, came out of it and started the blisters with my, again, I started it myself, just demo myself, and I got my mate on board. And then I got um, playing the bass, and then I got a drummer, and Neil, who was the bass player in Junkstar, joined on guitar. And the drummer was Carl, who was now Carl in the drummer from Air Logos. Right, so right. that was the introduction back into being mm. in a, in, and, and again, that wasn't kind of, we weren't gigging enough for me in the blisters. You know, I don't want to gig once every month. I know I haven't got a choice at the minute. But, <laughs> but you know, I was like, I need to be there. You know, yeah. So that's, that's why I moved next to Logos and just still kept the blisters on the back burner. So I just like to be busy all the time. Yeah. Just so many. I can't stay on one project. It's gonna, <laughs> I like to fire at all angles. You know, it's a bit of a headache at times, but it's, yeah. it, it's a nice you know. I yeah, you do, you do strike me as a, as a person that w wants to be busy all the time with different ideas yeah. and, and different things. And I mean, as I've already mentioned at the beginning there, you've got your radio show that you do. Obviously, that keeps you busy. Um, obviously, the bands, when you can do them at the moment, obviously, in the circumstances, yeah. you can't really do that. But um, y you also do these uh, Friday Night Lives which you've been doing in yeah. lockdown, and you're up to number 20 coming up, I believe. Friday, which is absolutely ridiculous, because um, originally I was, I never even thought I would do one, and I just noticed a few people just, you know, picking their guitars and just sitting in front of the screen and thinking, hey, it's the next, next best thing. And I thought, why not? We'll only be doing about three or four anyway, you know, <laughs> and, some, and everything back home by May or something. And then it just snowballed, and it's quite, you know, it's, it's decently popular, it's healthily popular, and people like it. I get amazing messages of people saying, oh, that was fantastic, and yeah. you've got to do nothing. <laughs> I kept doing it. I just thought, why not? Like, and I, oh. and, um, plus, it, it's all awesome. I'm mm. doing, I'm trying to do almost a new set every week. So I'm doing songs I've never performed live before. Yeah. So I've got, there's a ton of Junkstar uh, back catalog, a ton of logos back catalog, a ton of, ton of Blister stuff, my solo stuff, my acoustic project, the Cherry and Peach things, and new songs. Yeah. But there's almost... It's an everlasting... And you, and you, and you, you throw yeah. other songs in there as well, don't you? You also yeah, yeah. throw those into yeah. a never-ending yeah. list of yeah, exactly. that you can be Especially doing. Especially with the, the cover song just being good fun because I've never been really one for covers. So mm. now I'm kind of myself wanting to learn a few just to mix it up and have fun. Yeah. So at least it's kept me sort of practicing and, and keep my hand in and singing and playing and working and having a focus because... The worst thing for me would just be to have nothing to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Which I would never let it go. Yeah. Um, these Friday nights are taking on a life of their own now. So, yeah. Do you rehearse these Friday nights beforehand? Oh, yeah. It you, takes up more uh, time. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah, as spontaneous as it looks then. No, it's not as spontaneous as it looks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Looks like a bit of a free fall, a bit, of a, a bit of a laugh, which is great because yeah. I like to come up with that. But yeah. the fact that I've been sweating all week relearning, so I'm relearning old songs I've never played for, say, 10 years. Yeah, so yeah. Them, relearn the words, relearn the chords, maybe do them in a different key. Yeah. And that, you know what I mean? And plus, you know, I, you know, I like it to be good, you know, of course. You know, I don't want it to be a bit of a shambles, you know, it might look at, it might look at the times, but <laughs> it's just good fun, you know. Yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't known you for that long, I'll be honest with you. We've only recently connected on, uh, yeah. on Facebook. So I kind of like coming at the tail end of these live things that you do. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I've definitely enjoyed watching them on a Friday. Um, and I know that there's, there's certain people out there, they, they build their Friday night around watching them now. <laughs> well, well, in, in, in actually putting them out. You know? it is, it's fantastic. I, I get some brilliant private messages and people show photos of them on the, oh, I've got you on the big screen tonight and we're all sitting yeah. with the family. Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <Which is funny. laughs> I mean, yeah. it's heartwarming and so makes you think, wow, it is worth doing these, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I never thought it would be almost half a year later, still down this line, this mm. road doing these. I never thought this for a million years. I don't think anybody yeah. did. But. Um, one question that's, that always kind of like springs to mind when I watch it. Now, I don't know what the reasons are for it, obviously, but why, why is there not any acoustic drums maybe in there? Acoustic what, sorry? Why is there no like acoustic drums or a drum maybe in there with your drummer? Does he live too far well, away? Or it, um, initially, of course, we couldn't because we're, you know there wasn't anybody allowed. But now that is something we can be doing. But um, even, even if it was a snare drum and a, and a hi hats or whatever, just to give it a little bit of yeah, yeah. I had thought about like programming drums as well. That that, that was something I could think about. I guess I think because I thought it was just going to be. Just me, just kind of, you know, just yeah. arsing about, you know, just having a bit of fun. But now, because I don't, you know, you have to keep mixing it up. That's why I got my, my son gets up and then I do a bit, um, mm. you know, we'll plug in electrically too as well. So yeah. it's yeah. a very tight group, so there might not be much room for much more. Yeah. But we have spoke the band about maybe doing, because um, Paul and myself, Paul, guitarist from Logos, we did a, uh, a band stream well the two of us the other week from my kitchen which is a bit different oh, but right. we are looking to involve you know maybe carl as well on drums and, and try and because that, that's the way things are done. i know bands are doing live streams and so i think yeah, the, the yeah. professionals did a brilliant one last week i think you saw that one as well yeah 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 and that was brilliant. i mean they had a setup in a fantastic studio as well but yeah uh, something like that could be um for the very near future because i think we're going to be doing these fridays for quite a while now yeah, yeah. I, I actually did a, um, it wasn't a live stream as such, but I, I did a video for a band um, that they rehearsed in a venue. I went out with a couple of cameras and filmed them and, and edited, edited the, uh, the, the gig as it were really. Uh, oh yeah. And put it together and, and put it out on the internet for them. Um, they were doing that in terms of trying to make money for the venue as well at the same time. Yeah, um, I mean, that's but, a pretty good idea. Yeah. Especially how a lot of venues Venues may suffer badly because of this. You know, we might never see some brilliant venues ever again, which would be really sad. You know what I mean? But what can we do? We'll just do our best, yeah. Well, that's it. We've all got to do a little bit to try and help them yeah. out in some way. Absolutely. Um, would you ever go down? I know. Uh, would you ever go down that, that route of charging for your, your live on a Friday night? Or is that. I know, because a few people have asked me that. Um, some people said, uh, I was talking to my friend last week and he said he's noticed someone who's just started doing them and they're charging already and they're doing all right. And he says, piece has done 20 and he doesn't charge a penny. So I don't think I'll start, I wouldn't charge for the Friday night ones because they're just so enjoyable now. Just a little bit of fun. An hour. I mean, it's a lot of hours out of my week to rehearse for it, but one hour on a Friday night and it's great fun. And um, But yeah, I, I guess a lot of people, uh, for a lot of people, it's it's their only income, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I see the reason for doing that if it's your only source of income. And, um, but I mean, we're suffering as a band, not suffering, but we're not, we haven't got any income coming in for the mm. things which keep on the road, you know, which keeps us in the studio, which keeps us in merch. So yeah. we haven't got much generator coming in. You're, you can, there's only so much you can do selling your gear online, you know, when, oh, yeah. and feeling the pinch anyway, and everyone's asking for donation, donations here and there. So it, it's a really hard time for, for musicians who are trying to make money, but yeah, so that's why, yeah. as long as I'm still enjoying it, you know, I mean, I'm on the bones of my arse, but it's, uh, <laughs> I'm having a good time. You know, anyway. Yeah, that's it. Um, because the, the frustrating thing with Logo is, we just released our new single, Disgraceland, yeah. we just put the video out, and the CD single's ready to go, and the t-shirts, well, some t-shirts ready, well, they're not ready yet, because we're waiting for the income from the sales, etc. Yeah, yeah. as you know, that's over. So yeah. what kind of, um, I wouldn't say stumped on that at the minute, but you know, I couldn't have come at a worse time for when you've just released your new single and things like that, you know. Oh no, yeah, yeah. So needless to say, it didn't chart. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah. Um 
moving along slightly, you do the uh, the Psycho Radio Show. Um, again, that's uh, that's something that you must work on an awful lot beforehand as well. You pre-record those as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I pre-record them. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's on Radio Northumberland. What used to happen, I was a regular guest on the New Wave, New Wave with Newman radio show on Monday nights, um, yeah. 7 p.m. on Radio Northumberland. Yeah. And I was in there once and I, he was showing me how he did it on Audacity Software. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. He just said, oh, you, you can do your own show. This is about six years ago. And I said, well, can I do my own show? He said, yeah, of course you can. So I used to do a punk show called uh, Anarchy in the USA, which was all American punk. Yeah, yeah. And it was just a two-hour show, and it used to take us ages. So when I got busier with the band, I couldn't do two hours, and I uh, brought it down to one hour. And then I changed it to more, a more general show called the Cycle Radio Show. Yeah. You know, because the Amer American punk show was strictly American punk, so I was limited. Yeah. So I wanted to do a broader show, and that's why yeah. this show came out. But, yeah, um, last year I didn't do many, but... I started doing them regularly again because of the lockdown because I found I had a bit more time. Time to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and so I enjoy it and it seems to pick up again and there's a, a little bit of a boat. You know, you're you're chatting amongst people on the on I've Facebook. Got, well, yeah. It seems to have a, a nice buzz about it and again, it's fun to do. Um, it's a lot of hard work because I'm just piecing it together with, and especially when I do them with Cherry B as my guest, which we yeah, did. Yeah. Uh, last night for the Rebellion special. Yeah, that was, uh, a, that was a great show. It was the punk, punk yeah, special yeah. Rebellion, obviously. Um, yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, but there, there's another um, festival, obviously, which yeah. obviously like, cancelled. So we thought we'd just still honour the tribute to the show, which we do every year, yeah. because we were supposed to be playing there again, third year running, which is an honour in itself as well. So yeah. what yeah. better way to celebrate it with a, a radio show. But yeah, um, great fun. And yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time as well. So... It keeps me busy. I'm busy all week. <laughs> the radio show and the Friday show, but and write new stuff. But yeah, I yeah. wouldn't have it. To be honest. How, how do you go? How do you go about choosing the songs that you're going to play on the show? Well, because it's, it's, it's quite varied, as you say. It's quite varied. Yeah, my, it is varied. And um, when I have Cherry on, she's uh, very different. She's got a different taste to me. But with the Rebellion show, it was a bit easier because we. I mean, there's about 500 bands to choose from, but yeah. on a general cycle radio show, it's just anything off the top of my head, really, you know, yeah. which there's a lot of stuff. So I think I try to keep it more British, to be fair. You know, we we'll still shove the odd um, American or even European sort of um, stuff in as well. So it is very varied, but I don't really think about it. Just if I see a band or remember a band or yeah. my favourite, the Wild Hearts. There's always something yeah. Wild Hearts related. Yeah. But I like to play maybe a lot of bands who people have never heard before. Yeah. A lot of people say, who's that band second last? And you know, so it's nice to introduce people to bands who wouldn't normally get played on yeah. any radio. You know? where, where do you go looking for the bands that are kind of undiscovered to people? I know that recently, just to quote one of the bands um, that, that you recently discovered, I believe, is The Last of the Teenage Idols. Um, how did you come across that band, for instance? <laughs> Well, speaking of that amazing band, but because I, I just remember them in my dad's Kerrangs. I've got some down there, actually. In my dad's old Kerrangs. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah, he's actually got the first edition of Kerrang. So I read it as a kid, and I just always remember reading this name, The Last of Teenage Idols, like yeah, when I was yeah. a kid. For some reason, about six weeks ago, it came into my head. I don't know why. I've got no <laughs> idea. And I searched them on YouTube, and I found this song, Gina. And I just like, what? This is the best song I've heard in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was hooked. I thought I need this album and I found it on YouTube and the album blows away. So I managed to source a vinyl copy and I'm just, and I've got a t shirt. I just, but I love the fact that I can find a band from 30 years ago yeah. and still be sort of like, wow, you know, like make a difference to your musical taste. I just thought they were brilliant. And now, and you put me in touch with their uh, butts as well. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is amazing. But like, and now I speak to butts. So I'm now like mates with a sick, like, whoa, just amazing. You know? <laughs> Thank you for that. So, yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. That's yeah. just one example. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> <laughs> it's throwing me now. <laughs> um, yeah. You've got a gig lined up, I see, later um, at the end of this month, in fact. Is that going to go yeah. ahead, do you think? At the yeah, Rock was... Drive. Drive in, is that? But... Drive in. Rock driving too, so to try and test the formula. They did one um, last month or the month before that, 
um, mm. RF Durham Airfield. Um, it's in a massive field in a proper big stage um, with everyone with a car pod sort of spaces. Right. And, you know, so, um, there's only 200 tickets, I think, but it's 200 tickets and there's four people, you know, or five people per car. Yeah, yeah. And this one is now sold out now, I think, as well. Oh. Again, so the last one sold out and this one now. Uh, headlining is XSLF. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did uh, well, stuff. Well, yeah. on, well on before them at 8 o'clock. So it's bands on from 2, I think, till 11. So mm. looking forward to that because that will be our very first sort of making a racket yeah. plugged in gig since March, mm -hmm. which is a long time. And we haven't rehearsed yet. So we're in the process now, we're talking today, actually. We're just booking um, a rehearsal today because Paul and myself have practiced acoustically. I've practiced with Karen, but we've never been in a room with Carl. Do you know to give it the full yeah, way, yeah, which is yeah, yeah. been so long. It'll be it'll be strange plugging in again, you know. But a place is open up there, are they for, for rehearsals? They are all kind of opening up, or yeah, uh, the one we use is just about two miles up the road, and they've just recently um, opened about I think it's about two weeks ago, a week or two weeks ago, and yeah. they've got booth for the singers and stuff. So everything's very um, socially distanced and you know sanitized and etc. Which you have to be. I don't yeah, know. It's, it's yeah. a ask, but it has to be done. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it'll be a while before we go back to the way it was, as mm -hmm. as they say, you know. So, but these outdoor gigs are a great thing to sort of. You know, it'll feel almost normal. It'll feel almost normal playing on a stage anyway. Yeah, yeah. we had cars just be like playing in front of a car park, you know, which is a bit, <laughs> bit odd. But the, the only the only thing that's getting a bit worrying in terms of playing things like that is that we're not going to be far off going into autumn, winter soon. Things like yeah. that are not going to be. Uh, something that um, we can continue in the cold in winter, I'm sure. Right, uh, you're totally right. That, that's a conversation I had with my friend today. We were speaking yeah. about things, bands, and so it was like, you know what, that's right, yeah. What happens when it gets to like the freezing cold, northern sort of <laughs> cold, <laughs> dark night? Uh, even days, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, so you know, we're, we're going to be back to a lock in without a lock in almost. Um, that's, what it, that's what it is. <laughs> I mean, fingers crossed. Like, I guess people are just trying to make the most of summer. Um, yeah. I, things as they can now before anything changes or because mm. I don't think we're anywhere near any indoor sort of um, gatherings you know for gigs at the minute no no definitely um, anyway let's move along a little bit who would you like to work with if you were given the chance yeah, musically this is tricky one I mean I'm gonna say well I'll go to two I'll say my two ultimate like, musical heroes who inspired us a lot is um, Adamant, yeah, massive Adamant fan. To work with someone as diverse and crazy as Adam and talented, I know uh, someone who else who's uh, really into Adam and the Ants, Gina. Yes, <laughs> he's very into Adam and the Ants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could, I mean, I saw that was my first ever gig in 1982 when I was like very small. Yeah, I saw him in Newcastle Hall and the uh, Prince Charming review tour. Yeah, amazing been a fan like you know as far as I can remember um but of course Ginger Ginger from the Wild Hearts because he yeah. is like a musical genius the amount of diverse material and the amount you know and it's not as if it's the quality stuff as everything in my opinion what he puts out is just yeah. fantastic oh um, I'm a big Ginger fan so you, you, you you're already t talking to the converted as it were <laughs> And, and, and I mean, the, the ultimate, the highlight of anything I've ever done in my life is when Logo supported the Wild Hearts last year. Yeah. At the, the Brickyard in, in um, Carlisle. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, you know, because someone said to me about a year or two ago, what, what's, what's your ambition? Or what? And I said, well, I would, like to, I would like to be on stage, the same stage as my favourite band in the world, which is the Wild Hearts. So I've done what I, you know, in a way. I know that, I've, that isn't even high, but they're my favourite band, you know, so to support them was just like the dream. A dream come true. We have to stand on stage with my son and my best mate, the Wild Hearts backdrop. You know, <laughs> can get much better than that for me, you know. Yeah. So I quit now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it could get a little bit better, though. Um, yeah, because could. you you did actually say to me that you've got something in the works with one of the Wild Hearts. That's um, right. Yeah. Certain, we can talk about that now, can we? Yeah, yeah well, I suppose we can touch on it, why not? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Danny, yes, yeah, Danny McCormack, the bass player from the Wild Hearts, who um, got in touch with me late last year. He was getting a message, uh, message on Facebook mm -hmm. on a chat 
then can you get in touch with Willis? And I was thinking, well, why does he want to speak to me? You know, so so we called, yeah, gave him a number, and we had a conversation. He was on about putting because the main grains were um, they went a separate ways, and he was still in the Wild Hearts. Yeah, you know, but I suppose that wasn't a perm. Well, it is a permanent thing, but they weren't torn thin all the time. So I yeah, think yeah. he found a little bit of time on his hands, and he fancied at the start of 2020. Um, Starting a new band, so he'd mentioned yeah. it to uh, Giz Butt, yeah, yeah, Jenna uh, Stark, and uh, Snell, the drummer out of Towers of London, and yeah. myself. So we we had a chat, and <clears throat> we've all wrote we've all wrote some songs for it and contributed, and we've we've got a chat group going. But obviously, with this now, it's it's put everything on hold, and yeah, yeah. and we you know I think everyone's going to be busier with their own things now, mm. so. This thing may still see the light of day. Hopefully it will, but I guess because everything's changed, there's nothing kind of certain or concrete about it at the minute, you know. But, yeah, yeah. but hopefully it's on the back burner for when everyone has got a bit of time. You know what I mean? So we'll just have to see, but that would be very exciting. And just, I mean, I'm thrilled that Danny asked, you know, someone like me to to write with him and this stuff, you know, because that's, that's a surreal moment. Yeah, I've, I've got posted the White Hearts on my wall like, from when I was a kid and stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ridiculous, me, but but hey, you have to go with stuff. Like this. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. never going to be boring if you're working with the white hearts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <But> you <are. laughs> anyway, um, right, I'm going to uh, take you into unknown territory a little bit now. Um, yeah. And part of what I'm going to ask you, I've got several questions that have been put forward by uh, a couple of your followers. Well, I say a couple, three of your followers from Facebook. That follow okay. you on the radio they follow your live feeds um they've got some questions that they want me to put to you one we've kind of just touched on really um and then it's from victoria lock hey uh, victoria <laughs> yeah um she's asked who would be your dream band to play with which i think we've probably answered already but let's give her another answer Let's I'll give another answer. Of course, it's yeah. well hard. So I've already played with, but I'd love to play on the game. But I'd love to play with, and I know they'll probably never play again. So this is a fantasy, but the the Sex Pistols. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But I wouldn't have, you know, now, I mean, the original Pistols are all still alive, but I can't, um, um, I can't see it ever happen again. But never say never, but in, in some shape or form, I'd love to play, honestly, yeah. with the Sex Pistols. They're feeling that, the professionals, because I absolutely love the professionals. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant band, and, and yeah. I loved that like the other weekend. It inspired us for the next day, my Friday, to do a little professionals medley at the start because I was that, I was that excited by watching a live band so good yeah. as them again. And I saw them twice at Rebellion, and they're brilliant. So yeah, so they go. I'll say the professionals then. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. She's got got another couple of questions as well. It wasn't just one question from her. It was uh, there was three. Not shy. There we go. If you could choose. Or, or rather, if you could record a song with any artist or band, dead or alive, who would you choose? Oh. <laughs> that is really tricky. Wow. Record a song with any artist or band, dead or alive. Record a song. One of that songs, or just, just mean in general, just record a song with one of your favourites. Yeah. I suppose it's, it's doing a cover, really, isn't it? I suppose. I guess. But then I would. I would think I would go up and say. Um, I would say Adamant because yeah. I would love to be uh, being in a studio with someone as creative and diverse as him. I can imagine being pretty crazy in a studio. Yeah. All stuff going on. Adamant, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think he's a musical genius who's often overlooked. I think for you know because a lot of people just remember him as being um, you know just a pop phenomenon in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. But I think. <laughs> He, he's much more than that, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. a great recorder as well, and a musician and a writer, so I could be, yeah, to record with Adam and I would, I think he's the only person that I would actually be kind of in awe of, you know, if I, yeah. if I met if I met him, I think I would be a little bit, shit. <laughs> Adam and, you know, that's just me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And yeah. the third, third question from Victoria as well. Do you think that the last 20 weeks in lockdown have helped you develop musically? You would think so. But <laughs> 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 well, personally, I mean, it's funny because a lot of people are saying, oh yeah, yeah, your voice is better, but you can't really tell. But I think it's kind of hard to realise 
um, yourself. But I personally feel I've never rehearsed more and I've never sang more and I've never wrote more. So it surely has, I should get some benefits somehow, somewhere. I don't know where. But yeah, I, I think I will because I play guitar more than ever now. Because yeah. some weeks, if, if, Junkster, uh, Junkster, if we had a Logos gig, <laughs> I'd go, I'd go, I'd go, I'd go, I'd go. It's all right. <laughs> the poster behind you, see? Um, <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I wouldn't rehearse for a week or something because, you know, we'd, we'd have our set ready. And but now I'm always, it comes to Monday, Tuesday, I'm, I'm, I'm back on it. So yeah, the answer yeah. to that is yes, I think it, it, it has to, you know, because I mean? yeah. put the hours on my fingers up. I've got blisters on my fingers. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, we'll yeah. move along. We've got the next question. And it comes to another one of your listeners and followers, Sarah Wharton. Sarah, are right. <laughs> yeah. you? Yeah, and she's asking, how, how would you compare writing the lyrics music and structuring the songs from your early days in Junkster to your current work with the logos? Mm. Um, good question, yeah. I think... In a way, I may have kind of calmed down a little bit. I think when I was younger and more like angrier, because some of the, the Junkster stuff I was, once I got the hang of writing stuff and I got away from the early three chord stuff, I started to get a riff off of it. I went mm. a lot of Wild Hearts riffing E tangents on a lot of songs. You know, I, I kept, kept going off. I was, so it was a bit like schizophrenic, you know what I mean? Musically, yeah, yeah, not yeah. socially. Yeah. Um, and so, so I think I've kind of controlled that a little bit better. I was just going off, and I was writing like a maniac the first few mm. years. I mean, in, in Junkstar, we kind of, we, I think I wrote about 80 songs for Junkstar in about three years, and we only gigged, three or four years, we only gigged about 60 of them. We will often do different sets every week. So I think I've kind of reined it in a bit. Mm. You know, so I kind of take my time a bit more. Yeah. So I've, it's definitely kind of um, developed as I've got older, I think, you know, because yeah. I was younger then. So. I mean, so yeah, I think I've kind of, I would like to think I've kind of matured as a writer, you yeah, know. Yeah. But I think you're always learning and you always want to get better, you know. Mm -hmm. Like a writer, um, you, you like yourself, you'd think you haven't wrote your best song yet, you haven't wrote your best album yet, you know. Yeah, what I mean, you keep you know, other people may think yeah. otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> like people tell me, oh, I love your junkster stuff, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> you want to be here and now. I mean, this is where I'm from. <laughs> but you understand that because they've got memories of older stuff. Yeah. It's, it's some more, you know, whereas your new stuff is for unfamiliar to people. Mm. But, so, yeah, I think uh, I would like to think I've got, got better. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you touched on it slightly there, actually. Um, you did um, 52 songs in 52 weeks of recording project in 2015. Yeah. Um, how did you find enough inspiration for that many songs? That was a strange one because the, the idea was I'd already had recorded probably about 30, 40 songs just from my, over the years, uh, acoustic uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. I just thought, I had a manager at the time and we said, why don't I put them out every week just for fun? Yeah, yeah. Instead of, but then I thought, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. For the very first one, I'll write a new one. Mm. So, and I wrote a song called New Year's Revolution. And that was the first one. Then I thought, I'll do another new one. Yeah. So I ended up thinking, what happens if I do, if I write and record one every Monday? And that's what I did. So their mother 30, 40 got shelved, so they're still there. And I ended up doing a brand new one. So every song on the 2015 project was wrote in, written in 2015. Yeah. So I'll record it through the week. We'll put out on the Monday, then record the next one, put out on the Monday. So a lot of them are, they were just recorded in this room. Every one was recorded in this room. Yeah, yeah. Just with a, uh, two, two mics, one mic in front of us and just played and then bashed mm. it out. And it was done by a Logos World website at the time, but um, we haven't got the manage anymore. Um, so, but yeah, them I'm really proud of them songs. There's a lot of songs I still do on the Friday nights, and yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't really find it hard because I just got into a groove of it. You know what I mean, so what? What? I mean, lyrically, where do you find the inspiration for the different uh, songs? Good point. I mean, so, there's a lot of stuff matter, about, yeah, there's a lot of stuff about um. So about my past, uh, my, my childhood and, and experiences and stories. There's oh. two songs about two friends, sad, sadly, who I lost when I was, you know, my best friend who died in 1997, another friend who died in 2001. Mm. Sing, sing about things like that. Sing about the 80s was a, 
a decade that made who, me who I am, because that's the one I remember growing up in the 80s and things like that. And thinking about stories what happened in my locality, you know, about dodgy characters and things like that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, seeing about my school days and things like that, and seeing about the bands I like. And it's amazing. I know, because 52 songs, and Christ, you know what I mean? How <laughs> did I even do that, you know? Because someone's at the end of the year, someone's going, Are you going to do it again next year? I'm like, No, I don't think so. <laughs> But, it's, um, it's a very, very similar project to uh, to Ginger's project. Ginger did a similar thing, didn't he? Uh, yeah, well, again, he's it, a massive inspiration. So mm. you are not necessarily copying, but you're inspired by people yeah, doing yeah, yeah. But serious, serious sort of creative projects. And you think, oh, I want to be like that. I want to be as creative. And if it's, if it's in you, then kind of let it out. So yeah, yeah. Also, um, in 2017, I think it was, I did... Um, I did a 26 electric song um, project. So I did one full electric band song in here, yeah. then the drums, guitar, and um, one, one a fortnight, 26 weeks. So it was the alphabet. So I did A, B, C, all beginning with the, each yeah. letter go, which is on my SoundCloud page, kids. Peace right. UK. And <laughs> um, so they're all on, on there as well. So yeah, I, yeah. I like setting challenges, you know, it just it keeps us busy. But it's quite tricky setting a challenge for a full year because then. Even if you're away gigging or on holiday, you've still got to kind yeah, of commit to the project. Yeah, yeah you're committed it's to it. But really, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good fun and it, it kind of pushes you as well. So you may look into some different styles. Mm. You, know, you know, go a, think a bit outside the box. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which sometimes really cool, and then you can bring that back to your band or your other projects, and so it's it's all it, it's all all good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um. Sarah's got another another question. I, I think that um, we need to ask as well. How does the songwriting yeah. process differ between the logos and your solo acoustic work? Um, yeah, I guess. I don't. I guess because I mean I, I write everything now on on my acoustic guitar. Yeah. So everything will come. It may just decide itself, and it may be pretty obvious. Well, that's a heavy out style of thing, so it's going to go for the band. Or oh, I do do sort of um, like solo electric stuff as well, so maybe a bit poppier, the mm -hmm. heavier stuff go for logos or um, anything nice and sweet might go for the cherry and peach stuff as well. So I kind of don't sit down and go, right, I'm going to, it's logos day, let's rock on, you know what I mean? It's just whatever yeah. comes up. Yeah. I mean, sometimes some of them could be quite similar as well, because I do like to think I've almost got like a bit of a style, you know what I mean? In a way, in, in my head anyway. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes there isn't that much difference, but you know, some people think there is. But you know, what I mean, I'm kind of comfortable in writing stuff. You know, what I mean, and I, I know I was talking about things like I said the box, but I don't go too. I don't go any so avant-garde jazz fusion or anything. You know, I'm mm. kind of stick within the perimeters of three chords. <laughs> <laughs> that suits me. But I think most of them kind of decide them themselves. It's usually pretty obvious once I've started. Yeah. yeah. If I, I'm not looking for the fourth chord, I'm. Uh, I'm I'm off on one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, right, final final question. But this is from uh, another one of your followers. <laughs> I don't know if I should say follower really. This is Beverly <laughs> Ann. <Who>? Beverly Ann. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna like this one, aren't you? <laughs> I've heard of come on, let me have a go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Beverly says, uh, or asks, what poem or lyrics do you wish you had written? And what does that piece of writing say about you? Oh, I knew Bev would do the hardest thinking sort of. It's not about the song or the tune, but purely the words, she says. Exactly, because the spoken word means a lot to Bev. You know, language is her tool. Um, oh, that is a I wish I'd had this one in advance. Because that was a really <laughs> This is why I did uh, it. Really. <laughs> yeah, uh, you did too. Let's keep this one ten so oh, it is a little bit, little bit sneaky in this, you see. <laughs> I, don't, I don't normally ask people, but I thought you've got a nice little following of ladies there. Three, three ladies and they're all following you. Let's get them to ask you some questions. <laughs> just bear if you give, give us the hardest one. Oh, I just well, I say, save the hardest um, till last. <laughs> Yeah, um, I guess. Do you want me to I mean, ask what, you again what it is? Yeah, or do you? Pardon? 
Do you want me to ask you again, or are you happy to? Oh, I'm happy. I'm just, I'm just blagging it until. <laughs> because I mean, although I am a massive fan of lyrics and and words. There's sometimes. I'm like a melody sort of guy, you know what I mean? That's what kind of hooks yeah. me into some, um, songs a lot, um, melody. But I am a huge fan of the Wild Hearts song called Sky Babies, which is all about um, aliens, yeah. as you probably know, which yeah. I'm very in. And I do love the lyrics to that one. Right. So I, uh, um, I'll go with that one, because Bev was actually going to... Um, did she do it once for me on as a request when she was doing some covers? But I think we decided maybe too long. Did she do it? I'll get wrong for this, but... <laughs> but she's done that many covers and stuff but um, that yeah. one was because uh, I like when Bev does her uh, Saturday nights and she does some spoken word versions of songs because a lot of people you know, a lot of people don't catch a lot of lyrics you know on, yeah. on songs and they're often mm. she puts out there guess this and guess what the song is like, it almost takes people to the chorus to get what the words are you know so yeah. I'll, I'll go with my babies because I think that's a, it's one of my favourite pieces of work by the Wild Hearts because right. it's 12 you know, so many twists and turns, and I, I really like that about that song. So we'll go for that one. Yeah. Thank you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> she, <didn't hear> that. <laughs> <laughs> she was unsure what to ask you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Thank you for that, everyone. <laughs> when, uh, when you were at school, was English one of your strong subjects at all, language, or, or is it something yes, that's actually? Hundred percent. It was um, my best and one of my most favourite. I didn't like the sort of Shakespeare sort of stuff when I got to high school, but I really enjoyed the kind of creative writing side of things. I think that was my sort of strong point. But again, I didn't. So I was always, you know, quite good at. It, but I never really used it until um, a lot later. You know, a lot later years. You know, but mm -hmm. I think yeah, it's a cliche. When you're younger, you're trying to find yourself or whatever. You know, and you're not really sure yeah. what you're doing. But I, I do remember when I was playing drums in sort of the mid nineties, and I had a creative burst of writing poems, and I've still got them. I don't know if they're any good. I haven't revisited them for say twenty five years. But would be interesting. But I had a burst of writing words, um, and then nothing came of it. And then it was almost nearly ten years later when I started to write words. Now, but I think I find in songwriting, I think I find melody easier than words. Yeah. I think, you know, I, that's what usually comes first. A lot of people ask that what comes first, and it's usually the, nah, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I'll, I'll what we're going to sing about, because, well, you know, when I've written a lot of songs like the 52 and the 26 and all the Junkstar and Blister and Logos and Cherry and Peach, so somebody's think, well, what am I going to write about next? You know what I mean? <laughs> but as long as you're kind of living a full life, there's always things, there's always things going on. Yeah. I mean, this lockdown, I, early doors, I said, I'm not going to write about this. In situation because it's too predictable mm. but it never it because it's the thing on your head it's ah, you've got so much to say about it yeah. just uh, i've got one called terminal days which i'm actually playing tomorrow night i've done it a few weeks and i've wrote about three or four new ones as well all about this situation because it's affecting everyone in the world so much so you can't not write about it or you know if you're a, yeah. if so, you're a words a couple of musicians that i spoke to said that they they didn't really want to go down that, that, that uh, pathway of writing about this situation because everybody would be doing it. But, um, but yeah, if, if it's not exactly, yeah. write about, I think it should be written about. And, and, and yeah, it, it will stand the test of time. And in the future, if, if the song is that good, it will be there as a record of the time. I couldn't agree more because they were my yeah. thoughts entirely from the start. I'm not going to do it. Everyone's doing it. But the longer I've gone on, it's still, well, it's affecting everyone so much and there's so much mm. boiling up inside. And as you say, it kind of, yeah, it may date it to that time, but this is a massive piece of history here yeah. what we're living now. So it's yeah. not as if it's going to be, oh, that's out of date. You know, This is changing the world as we used to know it now. So. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that uh, um, during, during the time, during the World War, First World, Second World War, they were singing tunes in the trenches and things like that. And they're Absolutely. still here yeah. now to this day. Um, you know, so it has to be done, I think, really. I think, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I, I was all right with kind of changing my mind about it. I was like, strictly, no, no way. But I thought, mm. you know what? Hey, why not? This is a life of its own now. And it's, I mean, no one thought we'd be living through it this long. I think everyone, mm. oh, we may have had our blinkers on at, at the start of that. I, I don't know. But 
we just got to see what happens to you from here and now. And if we, you know, if we've got to keep writing about it, we've got to keep writing about it because it is what's it is what we're living through. So um, you write about what you know. Yeah, yeah. Right now, so it makes sense yeah. to write about it to me. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Um, anyway, we'll we'll about wrap it up there. I think if you're you're okay with that. Um, yeah, it's been we've, we've covered pleasure. rounds. I think there we've embarrassed you a little bit. We've had a few laughs. laughs. <laughs> of course. Um, oh, and I think we've we've also discussed any any future projects you've got lined up, gigs, um, Friday nights, radio. All yeah. good stuff. I'm, I've really enjoyed it, and I'm glad that I've uh, found you on Facebook as well and got involved with the different. Yeah, you. Yeah, you too. And thanks for getting. Originally, and put us in touch with our teenage idols. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, th thanks, to, thank <laughs> so th thanks for coming on uh, the Gutter Chat House. Really it's appreciate it. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it in all its YouTube glory. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then, mate. Um, okay. Thanks a lot.